Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Hello and welcome to class 80, advanced students. Yes, getting started in class 80 with a little review of class 79. As always, reviewing the previous class. In the last class, we were talking about the use of O, saying O instead of zero. We also talked about other terms such as nil and love, which is used in tennis. Nil, which means nothing or zero. And I said that in my opinion, this is, well, this is, this is what I said, and it's not, uh, it's not anything official, but based on observation, we have, we tend to have four or five main cases where we, we usually say O oh, instead of zero. We typically say O oh, instead of zero in telephone numbers, okay? My mother's number, 902, grammatical example, this is not my mother's actual phone number, but uh, 902-405-3041, for example. In dates, right, I said in 1904, uh, in, ni in 1904, my great-uncle crossed the Atlantic Ocean to go to Canada. Yes, in 1904. And in time, so if it's five minutes past five, we can say it's 5.05. It's 2.01. And this has been popularized by the, the, use, uh, the increased use of digital clocks. Instead of saying, oh, it's five past, we often say it's four, it's, it's 402. It's 406, for example, being very precise. Then we also use this in room numbers. When we're talking about hotels or conference centers or offices, we could say you're staying in room 501, in room 1604. So here, using O instead of zero. Okay, but uh, yes, we did talk about the use of love in tennis. And um, we also have, well, well, we have nil. Yeah, love and nil and o are the most common ones. But, but love, pretty much exclusively used in tennis. Nil in sports. Uh, sometimes we use nil to say zero. But o is very common, very, very common in the cases that I've just described. Okay, now let's go on with a little review of our translation list. Translation. Yes, it's time for a review of translation list 18. Translation list 18. Yes, and uh, we, yeah, we did finish this list in the last class, but it's good, great to review it anyhow. So hopefully you did well in the last class, but you'll do even better this time, right? Because it's a review. Number one, el plazo termina mañana. Fecha tope. It's almost like saying the, the, the fecha tope is tomorrow. We use the verb to be here. The deadline is tomorrow. But with the contraction, the deadline's tomorrow. When, when's the deadline? The deadline's tomorrow. The deadline is. The deadline's tomorrow. Number two, tengo derecho a una pensión. I'm entitled to a pension. Hey, I'm entitled to a pension. Give me my pension, please. Number three. Tendrás que tragar tu orgullo. You'll have to swallow your pride. You'll have to swallow your pride. Number four. Has hecho progresos fenomenales en los tres últimos meses. I hope that's true. Is it true? You've made terrific progress in the last three months. Now, progress, not progresses. Progress. You've made terrific progress. No, not, not done progress. Made. You've made terrific progress in the last three months. Number five. Fue una experiencia gratificante. It was a rewarding, that's right, rewarding. It was a rewarding experience. 
gratificante. It was a rewarding experience. Number six, vaya follón. Yes. Vaya follón. That's what my mother would say if she saw my house in Madrid. Vaya follón. What a mess. What a mess. Number seven, ¿Cómo voy a salir de este lío? I don't know. How am I going to get out of this mess? Este lío. Lío también es me follón. What a mess. Lío. How am I going to get out of this mess? Number eight, ¿Están conspirando para derrocar el gobierno? Derrocar al gobierno. Wow. They're... What was it? En voz alta. They're plotting... P-L-O-T-T-I-N-G, to plot the gerund. They're plotting to overthrow the government. Overthrow. Derrocar. They're plotting to overthrow the government. Number nine. Hicieron puente. They did not take a bridge. No, 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 no. Bridge. They took... A long weekend. They took a long weekend. Yeah. Number 10. ¿Cuándo piensas renovar tu permiso? Pensar hacer algo. When do you plan to renew your permit? When do you plan to renew your permit? Number 11. El chismorreo ha alcanzado niveles Insoportables. The gossip. Chismorreo. Gossip. Gossip. The gossip has reached unbearable levels. The gossip has reached unbearable levels. I can't bear it anymore. I can't stand it. I can't put up with it. Intolerable levels unbearable levels the gossip has reached unbearable levels and finally last but not least number 12 boy disculpa doy por sentado que sabes el desenlace I take it for granted. I take it for granted. Dar por, sen, dar por sentado. Doy por sentado. I take it for granted that you know the outcome. The outcome. I take it for granted. It's true. I take it for granted that you know the outcome. All right. Ooh, yes. It's time to move on to our expression of the day. <laughs> expression of the day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the expression of the day today is to pull up your socks. Tus calcetines, to pull them up. Subirlas, to, to, rate, to pull up, pull up your socks. Now, this means to... Start to pay attention more, to make more of an effort, to really get get active, to work hard and make an effort to start to pay closer attention and uh, do what it has to take to succeed. You can't be lazy. If someone is lazy, then they decide to, okay, it's time to get serious about this. It's time to pull up my socks here and learn this language. And this is a good one for learning English. It's time to pull up your socks. If you've been floating along, not paying too much attention, not working hard enough, well, listen, it is time to pull up your socks and get serious about learning English, okay? To pull up your socks. Pull up one's socks. I have to pull up my socks. You have to pull up your socks. She has to pull... Well, she had better... We can say that as well. Mas vale que she had better pull up her socks because otherwise she's not going to pass the exam. Okay? To pull up one's socks.
X. All right. All right, let's move on. Let's move on now. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad. Me alegro. I'm glad that you are listening. I'm glad you listened yesterday. I'm glad I started hosting this radio show. Are you glad you decided to listen today? I'm glad you decided to listen. I'm glad that you're listening right now. Okay, this is me alegro. But in, in English, the grammar is actually even easier because in Spanish, you say me alegro de haber hecho algo. Whereas in English, we just use the simple past. Me alegro hice algo. Se, se dice así en inglés. Me alegro hice algo. I'm glad I did something. I'm glad I saw you. I'm glad I joined the radio team here. Yes. I'm glad I did it. So here, yeah, the grammar is not so hard. But we also have to pay attention to the pronunciation. Pronunciation! What? Yeah, we're going to pay attention to the pronunciation here. The M, the pronunciation of the M, making sure that you're closing your mouth with the letter M. I'm. I'm glad. I don't want to hear you say, I'm glad. I hear that all the time, and it bothers me. It gives me a headache. Oh, no. I'm glad. So I'll say a sentence, and I just want you to repeat after me. I'm glad I came here six years ago. Repeat. I'm glad I came here six years ago. I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad I came here six years ago. I'm glad I started hosting this radio show. In both alta? I'm glad I started hosting this radio show. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you decided to take this course. I'm glad you decided to take this. Now, now my questions, and just answer my questions. Are you glad you decided to follow this course? Are you glad you decided? Yes, I'm glad. Yes, Kyle, I'm glad I decided to follow this course. Good idea. You should be because it's a good, it's a very good course. Are you glad that there's a radio show following all the content? Yes, I'm glad that there's a radio show following all the content. Are you glad that we created this, this, this course? Are you glad that we created this course? Yes, Kyle. I'm glad that you created this course. Well, thank you. Yes. I'm glad that you're glad. I'm glad that you are benefiting from it. I'm glad that you appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Me alegro. Well, I think we've practiced that enough. I think we can move on. Vocabulary of the day. On now to our five words of vocabulary for the day. Our first word of vocabulary is organizar una fiesta. Es como tirar, lanzar. We say to throw a party. To throw a party. Yes. Organizar una fiesta, to throw a party. Cebolla. You have to know this one. Everybody knows this, right? Onion. 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 Fuera de contexto. Out of context. Out of context. Asustar? To frighten. To frighten. Ooh, ooh, he frightened me. Que susto. He frightened me. To be frightened or to frighten. Asustar. To frighten. Yes. Abandonar. Tirar la toalla. To give in. To give in. Give in. Phrasal verb. Hang on. To give in. Abandonar. Tirar la toalla. So, we also have to throw in the towel. Tirar la toalla. To throw in the towel. To give in. And this comes from boxing. This expression comes from boxing because when people are boxing, if one guy is losing really badly in this fight, 
they're they're boxing, they're fighting, and one guy, one of the guys is losing, but he's still standing, he's still on his feet, but he's losing really bad, and his trainer is worried that he's going to get hurt, and the trainer thinks there's no way he can win this fight. The worst situation is he loses. Well, the best situation is he loses without getting hurt, and the worst situation is he gets himself seriously hurt. So I'm going to throw in the towel, and he takes the white towel and he throws it into the ring. And when the white towel hits the the surface of the ring, the referee stops the fight. They do. It's like, it's like the white flag in a war. It's like you're saying, "I surrender." We surrender. We give in. We are throwing in the towel. Okay? So this expression, yeah, it comes from boxing, and you use it in Spanish as well, tirar la toalla, in English, to throw in the towel. Okay? So, I'm glad that you've decided to have a go at studying English. To have a go at something. Intentar o probar hacer algo. Okay, so intent that so to have a go at, but that you're you're doing more than having a go at it. You're you're doing it. You're learning English. If you're paying attention, if you're following the course on the TV, and at home, in the books, on the radio, on the website, using all the content, then you're learning. You're not just having a go at it. But but if you try to do something like, did you have a go at learning German last year? No, I didn't have a go at learning German last year. Ask me if I had a go at playing the guitar when I was young. Kyle, did you have a go to have a go? Kyle, did you have a go at playing the guitar when you were young? Yes, I did. I had a go at it, but I didn't learn much. Ask me if I had a go at playing the drums. Kyle, did you have a go at playing the drums? Yes, I did. I had a go at it. And, well, I, I, I still play the drums, actually. I do. I, I play the drums. So I had a go at it, and it was successful. Um, have you ever had a go at working abroad? It, it, I recommend it. I, I, I had a go at working abroad, obviously, and I'm still doing it. I've been here for years. I never went home, <laughs> more or less. Um... Ask me if I've ever had a go at learning to cook gourmet food. Kyle, have you ever had a go at learning to cook gourmet food? No, I've never had a go at learning to cook gourmet food. So it means I've never, basically, I've never tried to learn to cook gourmet food. No, not really. Okay, to have a go at it. I, I don't think I should have a go at any other examples because we are running out of time. We're completely out of time, in fact. So I'm going to end the program there, but thank you so much for listening. Tomorrow, you can join me again, same time, same place. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>